Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce you to the. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's my pleasure to introduce you to the competent person and uh, the PERC committee. My experience in the in the past, especially in Eastern European countries, was uh, that. Um, a lot of the geologists and mining engineers were kind of afraid um, of the competent person. But actually, there's not, because most of our colleagues, especially the older ones, are very qualified. And the only difference is the qualification, which we'll, we will see at the end. Now, what is PERC? PERC is the National Reporting Organization, which is responsible for developing mineral reporting standards and guidelines in Europe. It's a constituent member of SRISCO, the Committee of Mineral Reserves and National Reporting Standards. It was established by professional geologists, mining engineers and metallurgical engineers. It's a non-profit uh, organization based in Brussels. And it's largely based on the international reporting template, uh, which was shown by Heike before as well, with its 2017 um, reporting standard. Now, the four founding members of the, um, of the PERC committee are the IOM3, the Institute of uh, Mining and Metallurgy in, uh, the, in the United Kingdom, the Geological Society of London, the Institute of uh, the Irish Geological Institute and the European Federation of Geologists. Just recently, in, within the last year, FAMP, which is the Fenoskenian Association of Metallurgical and Mining Professionals, and IMAP, which is the Iberian Mining Engineers Board, joined uh, PERC as a full member. Especially IMAP um, could be, FAMP and IMAP could be an, an example for the Baltic states if they could um, join together for the mining engineers to reach in future the status of a competent person as well. Now, the PER committee comprises of four representatives from each of the constituent organizations which are the recognized professional organization, RPOs, for the accreditation of uh, geologists, mining and processing engineers as a competent person. In addition, a number of individual members um, as co-opted special advisors are members of the PERC committee as well. The principal activities are to maintain, improve, and promote the use of the PERC reporting standard, to represent the minerals industry of reserve and resource reporting matters, and to maintain international reciprocity uh, recognition of professional accreditation. PERC is based on four principles of which the First one is the transparency. That means adequate information is presented clearly and unambiguously. Materiality considers all relevant information available at the date of reporting, competence. The work is prepared by suitable, qualified, experienced, competent persons. And impartiality, the competent persons is not unduly influenced by the reporting company. All four points have to be considered when choosing a competent person and, of course, when writing a report. The SRISCO standard <coughs> and codes are represented worldwide. From this uh, map, you can see in the meantime, um, we, we are 13 organizations in there from JORG in uh, Australia 
to CIM in Canada. Uh, one part is missing. I just see Sweden um, and Norway joined into um, the Swissco now as well with their new organizations. And then from Russia to Chile on the other side. Switching to the competent person. The competent person, the CP, is located in the field between competence and qualification. Its definition, uh, according to the health administration standard, is that a competent person means one who is capable of identifying existing and predictable hazards in, so in the surroundings or working conditions which are unsanitary, hazardous, dangerous to employees, and who has the author authorization to take prompt corrective measures to eliminate them. In mining industry, our main target is to protect the shareholders and other investors, avoiding misleading public reporting. That means also to protect the public reducing the chances of deliberate fraud occurring, provided adequate information on potential risk and uncertainties. And lastly, maintaining the reputation of the mining industry professionals. This was basically created in the early 90s after the big frauds in uh, Indonesia, the Briex scandal, where millions of uh, dollars were uh, taken from the investors. Now the PERC definition is similar. According to PERC, the CP is a minerals industry professional defined as a corporate member, registered or licensee of a recognized professional body, the RPO, <clears throat> uh, with enforceable disciplinary processes, including the powers of to suspend and expel a member. A CP must have a minimum of five years relevant experience to the style of mineral regulation and the type of deposit under consideration and in the activity that a person is undertaking. Acceptable professional bodies and classes of memberships under the standard which meet these requirements within Europe or elsewhere, the recognized professional organizations are listed separately in a document which are specified in Appendix 5. This definition of competent person is subject to any additional restrictions or conditions which may be required <clears throat> by the appropriate stock exchanges and regulatory authorities. The key elements for the, for the uh, competent person uh, relevant academic or te technical qualification, approved membership in, as an, in one of the RPOs, the six organizations which we just showed. Sufficient experience, a minimum of five years of relevant experience in the field which they are doing. Impartiality, not duly influenced by the reporting entity and the CPD is based on self-certification. That means when I'm convinced that I can do the job and I have the necessary experience, then I can self-certificate as a competent person on a project-to-project -project basis. Some jurisdictions, for example, uh, the Russian organizations now try to create an um, institute of competence some jurisdictions have a registration list. Now, 25 years ago, I became uh, a European geologist because my um, clients asked me to do so because they wanted to have a competent person. Since then, all my jobs I have got was because I'm a competent person. <clears throat> Qualification aspects include that the professional body, the RPO, must have a code of ethics and probably a code of practice as well. They must have a complaints and disciplinary proce process and they must provide a continuous professional development requirement. 
That means every year I have to do, like a dentist, in, in, at least in Germany, probably here as well, we have to prove that we are underwent some training. The types, um, the legal requirement in order to practice the, and which enables legal redress in case of a dispute and may require registration for the particular field of practice. As there are not too many people who uh, were, uh, who got a claim. Uh, for example, in the uh, European Federation of Geologists, we had not a single case in all the years. In Canada and Australia, there are some cases known where the disciplinary process had to be started. The RPO titles giving to the, um, which are the minimum requirement for the competent persons, are a member or fellow in the uh, IOM3 is the European geologist, Eurogeol, uh, in our EFG. <clears throat> the professional geologist in Ireland and uh, the chartered geologist or chartered scientist in uh, the GSL. The titles of uh, FAMP and IMAP are not specifically known yet. The self-certification is based um, on the knowledge of the CP in the relevant field. He must be prepared to defend the work in front of uh, his peers. It should allow for a comparable experience and you should be aware of overconfidence. Now, if you look at the work styles we have, we have uh, deposits of diamonds, nickels, coal, um, oil shale, dimension stones, copper. We have uh, different uh, forms of work, exploration, conceptual studies, feasibility studies, geological knowledge, mining knowledge, um, environmental knowledge. We have different uh, reports to write. Can that be done by one a uh, competent person, no it can't. So I can report only for a certain part. I can report only for a certain part um, of the expertise. That means also to write a feasibility study we need a team. Of course the team leader can um, probably not have all the experience from the others, but he takes the responsibility. The competent person is norm normally um, a minerals industry professional, an engineer or geologist. He should be a member of a recognized professional organization, as we heard that before, and a minimum of five years relevant experience is necessary. And of course, the competent person should be clearly satisfied in their own minds that they could face their peers <clears throat> and demonstrate competence in the commodity, type of deposit, and situation under consideration. If doubts is, exist, the person should either uh, seek opinions from appropriate uh, colleagues or should decline to act as a competent person. Meaning, I could never act as a competent person for coal, but I could lead a team where competent persons are in which uh, are competent for coal. Now our activities, as I said before, um, the primary responsibility is the reporting to the stock markets and security commissions, but also internally in the companies. Is leading the teams, is organizing audits and reviews. Part of any report should be the competent person's consent which is a legally binding document. This is absolutely necessary for all the reports we write. It can be a standalone um, statement and it can be included as a compliance statement. A template for this um, consent is um, in the annex for the uh, PERC standard. 
Also in the annex for the PERC standard is the so-called Table 1. Table 1 um, shows all the necessary reporting items which have to be standard in one of the, in, in a comprehensive report. This consists, of course, of the uh, context and the history of the deposit, the legal aspects in tenures, the knowledge of the CP about the project. For example, it is necessary that a CP has visited um, the deposit and not written his report uh, some thousand kilometers away. Deposit sampling data, expiration results, audit and re uh, reviews, <clears throat> the geological estimation of resources and reserves together with the, with the engineers, processing metallurgy, environment, market, mo and other modifying factors. The modifying factors, certainly in future, the um, SDGs, SDGs, the, um, the sustainable, sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations, will become much more important as they are in the moment. The, as I demonstrated, the competent persons work as engineers or geologists in the different fields. They work in underground mining, in drilling, and in processing. And from time to time, even in more exotic fields like uh, dimension stones, where rock rate and quality is a major thing. And defining the value, but in different ways and contexts, needing different competencies. For example, in Carrara in Italy, they ask, can this block be carved into this sculpture? Which is a, it's a geological problem in the end. Do you have cracks in there so it doesn't work? We already had in um, the um, resources and um, reserve lists, which um, include the modifying factors from the way from the resources to the reserves, and the reporting um, of the competent person starts right ex exploration. <clears throat> With the dis reporting on the discovery hole, the drilling, trenching, a conceptual study, the exploration result reports goes over to um, <clears throat> the, the resource estimation, pre-feasibility standards, the geological investigations, and in the end, it ends uh, in the development of the uh, of the project with the reserves and. A, re, a probable and proven uh, reserve estimation and a feasibility study. It continues in the annual reports um, of the mine life and in the end also, of course, uh, in the rehabilitation of the mine site. Now I'm coming to the end. The competent person is in the field of education plus qualification plus experience plus CPD and ethics. That makes the competence. Now, <clears throat> what, make, uh, what is the difference to most of the people who are competent but are not part, um, uh, not member of an organization? It's a qualification. Nothing else. Everybody of us here in the room, I assume, do have the ne necessary experience and education. It's only they have to become a member of a professional organization. The other question, is the title of a competent person an honor or is it, in, is it a burden? Because you have to take the responsibility. You have to sign for something. And um, people, especially stock exchanges, might disagree with your judgment. But in the end, whose competent, uh, competence would you trust for a gastro gastroscopy? The physician or the plumber? I think the competent person here in that place is the physician, not the plumber. Thank you and 
Lieutenant Vega. Uh, thank you, Michael. That was very interesting to see that uh, uh, this formula of competent person contains ethics level two. Uh, how uh, clearly is def defined uh, uh, in this field this ethics standards? Each one of uh, again yeah. the microphone. Each one of the um, rec recognized professional organization has has its own code of standards, which. Uh, we, as competent, per, as, as uh, Eurojurists, we have to sign that. Mm -hmm. We have to read it. It's part of our process to become a member. Very good. Thank you. Thanks again. One, one last point for yep. I would like to, to say. In eight days, the Estonian Geological Association will become a member of the European Federation of Geologists. So that is the start to become a competent person for you here. Oh. Good to know, thank you.